then if Cody wants a drink. Oh, Cody, do you want a drink? Why do you want the iced coffee? So about two and a half, two, two hours or so into the Nullarbor Plains, uh, we pulled up on the side of the road. We've been, we've had this awning out. I've put a clothesline on it that wraps up on the inside of it. It's a permanent fixture now, it stays there. Um, yeah, there's nothing here but dust. There's no amenities, nothing. But the people over there come over to talk to us. They're from Perth, they're heading to Melbourne and uh, they were terrific to talk to. It was Rob and, do you remember her name? I think it was Linda. Rob and Linda. We know her middle name's Margaret because she told us, but uh, we won't forget that one. But yeah, just in regards to firewood, we've got another hour and a half to go to the Australian Bight where we're planning on putting our heads down tonight. So just wanted to, uh... sorry, there's a truck going past. probably sounds more noisier to me than what it does to you but um, in relation to chainsaws and firewood you can see them on the net the cheaper ones on eBay which I brought this one here you know this is a $70 package comes with chargers with your charger two batteries yada 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 and it'll cut that much wood you can see it there It'll cut that much wood in just a few minutes and it'll probably cut half that again. Um, so that gives you a rough idea how good these ones work. You can get much better quality ones that will just cut as good as a petrol chainsaw. They'll do like an hour or more and you can cut 10, 20 times that amount of wood with a, with a, with a good quality one. But this one here, a saw like this for about 70 bucks will get you enough wood for one night if you don't stack it up too much. So I'll light the fire. These guys will all go in the fire. And then as the ends burn out, they all go back in. It's enough to cook dinner and it's enough for about three hours of burning. Uh, so yeah, that's that chainsaw. I have got a ripper petrol 20 inch, uh, 20 inch bar chainsaw in, in the car. That's not out at the moment. It's still in its box. It's brand new. Um, I have started it and checked it, but it is fine. But there was no need to bring it out today because uh, we're up to the Australian bite now. An hour and 15, hour and 20, somewhere there, hour and a half, whatever it takes. And uh, yeah, we've got our firewood. We've got uh, each other. We've got everything for one romantic night under the stars. Trust me, when you get out in the outback, and uh, the flies are pretty bad here, when you get out in the outback and there's no city lights reflecting into the sky or shining up the clouds or whatever, um, tell us what you experienced last night with the stars. We could just see them a lot better, a lot clearer with no street lights or any house lights. It just, the sky literally lights up and you can it, see it. That it's does. Like, yeah. it's, it's something that you'd never see when you're in the city. Um, it's a whole new world up there, you know, whatever you know about it or whatever, everyone knows something about it or feels something about it, but um, yeah, the nightlife in the outback is sensational when you can watch the stars and you can see all the, you know, lots of different planets and shapes and the saucepan and the southern cross and you name it, you can see the lot. Have a look at Kurt's face, he's just been in exploring. Oh, he's been out in the bush, Curtie. <laughs> hey, you want to shake hands? Shake hands with Dad, quick. Uh -uh. Shake hands, shake hands, shake hands, quick. Oh, you're so beautiful. Hey, no wonder everybody loves Curtie. Give us a look. Give us a look at your one eye. Oh, one eye. Oh, one eye, Ned. Yeah, so we're just getting a bit of a uh, bit of water on the boil there. And I just, Mar Margaret just mentioned to me, why don't we get some gauges for these gas bottles and we know how much is in them? And I said, well, we don't need them. And I mentioned to her how to check them and she goes, oh, that's interesting. So I'm about to show her, all you gotta do is run a bit of boiling water down the side of it and it'll freeze wherever the level is. So wherever, how much, however much of gas you got, Part of the bottle will stay normal and the other bit that's got the gas in it will, it'll put a big freeze mark around it where you run the boiling water down it. So that's a simple little trick. 
if you're on the road or if you're out camping or even if you're at home and you're not sure how much gas is in your bottle but normally when you're at home you just pick them up but when they're fixed and locked down like this you can't it's a bit of hot water just be careful of course a bit of hot water down the side of your bottles and it'll tell you the level of where your gas is at so as your gas gets lower and lower and lower sometimes you can still have about 10 percent liquid in there and there's no pressure in there so it won't force the gas out so when you go and top them up just be mindful that the last 10 to 15 percent of your gas bottle it's not coming out it's staying there so it's if you've got a bit under half um, you might get a barbecue out of it a barbecue or so out of it but uh, yeah get them filled up before they get too low because the pressure that's in there is gone by the time they get to 10 to 15 percent so here we go did you get the water right i tip it down the side might have just enough time for this yeah just tip it down the side of that keep going keep going keep going whoop and see what happens A little bit more. Did that boil that water? It did, it All right. did boil. A little bit more. Do you want to do it on the other side? No, just do it there. Yeah, tip it out, tip it out, tip it out. Okey Let's um. just wait a minute. You can, so I can see the steam coming off it, so it should be just about to show me where it's at. What can you see? Here, it's yeah. starting to like freeze. Yeah, I can see it. Yep. Right this side of the sun. Yeah, I can see it just there. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if the camera's picking that up properly, but you can see it. So. Oh, you can definitely see it all the way around there. Yeah. So there you go. So there's a perfect example that that bottle's got bugger all left in it. It might run the fridge for one more night. And that'll be it so when that runs out there's a little valve behind here you just face it towards that one turn that bottle on and i've got a spare one that i run in the front glove box or the front boot area whatever you want to call it and uh whenever we get to the next major town i'll get it filled up and uh, swap them over so yeah just a bit of trivia for your gas bottles with hot water all good i hope you're all going well back home hello to mum the neighbors all the boys on Ghost Riders and, uh, you know, all my old work friends and uh, Margaret's crew, anyone, you know, people in Perth, uh, Jess yeah, and Grant. Jess, Grant, Caleb, um, who else is there? I said Dad, yeah? He should have been. Al, there. how are you, Al? I hope you're enjoying the footage, mate. I've heard that you're, you're liking it, so I hope you're feeling all right, mate. We'll see you, see you one of these days. Anyone else? Um, Sharon and Britt. Um, just all my friends back home and Paul's friends. Yeah. Yeah. All good. All good. Life on the road's going well. Time so, to hit the road again. Yeah, back into uh, no, the Australian bite we're staying tonight. Shark bite, what's it called? Um, the Australian bite, there's free camping there, so we're going to check that out. See you later.